This program is brought to you by Emory University. My father said that one day, if man continued in his way, the creator would annihilate this world. He speaks to you. You must trust that he speaks in a way that you can understand. I saw water. Death by water. So here's the story of the biblical flood. Um, it begins with the days when humans begin to populate, and um, and also there's a little account of devious behavior when angels come down and they take women, human women, and marry, and they beget giants. It's a strange uh, fantasy literature type of story. This is though depicting a very weird, warped world. Um, God then sees that violence has, is covering, filling the earth, and he decides to destroy it. And not only humans, but everything, um, both, we're told, the creeping things on the earth, all of the beasts, the field, and even the birds of the air, and they will all be destroyed. And then, boom, we're told, but one man, Noah, found grace in the eyes of God. The flood story, as many people know, is told all the way back in the second millennium in Mesopotamia. You found it within the Gilgamesh, the famous Gilgamesh epic, but you find it also before within Sumerian uh, epics and so forth. And in the Atrahasis epic, the um, story that is probably the most famous telling of the flood in Mesopotamia, um, it tells about how the gods, the higher gods, are forcing the lower gods, the Gigi gods, to uh, do the labor, and the labor is troublesome for them and then they rise up in revolt and they want to go to the great god Enlil and do war with him and then Enlil, Enlil says no 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 what let's figure out a, a solution for this and they decide to create humans and humans are going to do the work of the gods they're going to build the canals and so forth but what happens with the humans is that they procreate there's no death yet and they become so many and so numerous that they create a lot of disturbance for the gods and the gods can't sleep and they get tired of the ruckus that now on earth and they decide to wipe them out. And that's when a dream comes to Atrahasis, this um, Babylonian Noah, and he's told in the dream by a god, Enki, that this, this is what the gods are planning to do and to build an ark and save himself. So the Babylonian epic, the Atrahasis epic, and as well as others, um, have the destruction of the humanity through the flood um, as a way to deal with overpopulation. But the reason for the flood within the biblical account is not um, overpopulation or something that humans naturally do, but their unnatural desires, uh, their violence. And that's explained in various ways when you get into the um, post-biblical writings, Josephus and Philo, they really embellish that with what exactly was the evil that uh, Noah's generation was engaged in. So much has been added to the story through retellings of it, whether it be in the New Testament with Jesus um, using Noah as a great preacher to the generation before the flood um, in the Gospel accounts or on to the rabbis in what's called an intertestamental literature or apocryphal literature, jubilees and this type of work. And the irony of the matter is that the biblical text itself consists of what scholars deem to be two separate sources. So the point here being that yes it's appropriate for Hollywood to add to this story and to interpret it because the biblical authors are already doing it themselves. They are taking an account and they are embellishing it in various ways. They're drawing on older traditions and synthesizing them, forming something new that had never existed before and that is really what makes great literature great literature as well as great movies great movies.